This presentation is part of the deliverable 3.3 of the InnoDC project on mathematical framework for converter interaction modeling. We will discuss what are the frameworks available for transient stability studies involving converter interactions, focusing especially on the interactions in the lower frequency spectrum, reaching up to a few tens of hertz. There are two main classes of programs available for the simulation of converter interactions. Electromagnetic transit programs, also known as EMTP, and transit stability programs. Typically, EMTP has been used to study electromagnetic transits, which are located in the high end of the frequency spectrum, while transient stability programs are generally used to study electromechanical transients associated with the behavior of synchronous machines and which tend to be slower in frequency. Models in EMTP do not necessarily have any implicit assumptions and they can be quite detailed. That leads to a more accurate representation of the system over a wide frequency range. On the other hand, in transient stability programs, it is assumed that the oscillations are restricted to the low frequency spectrum, allowing for more simplified models, but also restricting the frequency range of accuracy of these models. Due to the high level of detail of EMT models and the small time steps used, simulations tend to be slower. While in transient stability programs, the lower level of modeling details allow for faster simulations and larger time steps. If we consider how the power system components are modeled mathematically in these two classes of programs, the main difference between them is that EMTP does not necessarily make any assumptions on the component models, as I explained earlier. While models using transient stability programs are based on what is called the quasi-stationary phasor assumption. This assumption is based on the fact that only low frequency dynamics are taken into account when modeling the components of the power system, leaving out the higher frequency dynamics associated with smaller time constants. In practical terms, the models using transient stability programs are obtained by excluding some of the derivatives associated with fast dynamics, turning the differential equations into algebraic equations. Here we have some examples of mathematical models for the network, the synchronous machines, and the converters. The network equations are transformed from differential equations in EMTP to algebraic, based on the steady state phasor equations. For the synchronous machines, only the slow dynamics is included and the derivatives of the state of fluxes are neglected in the simplified model. And finally, for the converter, some simplifications are made in terms of the circuit equations that become algebraic and also in terms of the control modeling. In this case, only the control loops with slow dynamics tend to be included. Now that we have an idea of what are the different simulation tools and the models available for the study of converter interactions, how do we choose which one should be used in stability studies? The answer to this question has become more difficult with the growing amount of converters in power systems. And this is mainly because the control loops associated with converters are typically faster than the ones associated with the traditional synchronous machines. This means that studies that were usually done using transient stability programs might not produce accurate results because the stability that would normally be determined by the slow machine dynamics might now be influenced also by the fast converter controls. This makes it less clear when each class of program should be used. So how do we study power systems in this scenario? If the studies are carried out using EMT, this means that there will be a need for available detailed data of components and the simulations will tend to be slow. If the simulations are carried with transient stability programs, we need to be sure that they are still capable of providing accurate results. 
The conclusion is that there is a growing need to understand the impact of the model in detail and simplifying assumptions in order to understand what are the limits of the use of trend and stability programs and when should we move to more accurate representation of the system. Here we show an example where we analyze the accuracy of VSC models using trend and stability programs and the impact of the simplifying assumptions. The VSC model used was an average model, as shown in the figure, and the control loops included were the active and reactive power controls, the inner current control, and the PLO. For this model, it was possible to identify three simplifications that are typically adopted in trend and stability programs. The first simplification is where the inner current control is not modeled, since it tends to be a fast control and the time constants associated with it are small when compared to the simulation time step. For the second simplification, the PLL dynamics is not included. And in the third simplification, the derivatives associated with the AC side differential equations are neglected, turning them into algebraic equations are shown. Based on the simplification shown in the previous slide, Several VSC models were implemented and compared in order to understand the impact of each of the assumptions. The frequency range of accuracy of each model was determined by comparing the AC side admittance with respect to the full model. We see here a table showing all of the models. The most detailed is the full EMT, and it doesn't have any simplifications. After that, we have the models using transit stability programs, also called RMS models. The most detailed of them includes all the control details. This is the model two detailed RMS. And the least detailed, the model four simplified RMS, only includes the outer loop controls. Finally, we show an example of a result that was obtained with this study. Here we see the admittance for all the models. We notice that for lower frequencies, the admittances are the same and they start to diverge as the frequency increases. If we have a more careful look at the results, the black dashed line represents the full order model, the EMT model, and is the reference. Ideally, all other models should follow this one as closely as possible. It is possible to observe that the most accurate model after the EMT is the detailed RMS in yellow, which includes the same control loops as the EMT. From the graph, we can see that this model follows the EMT one up to around this point which corresponds to approximately 10 hertz in the rotating DQ frame. This means that this model would be accurate for frequencies ranging from 40 to 60 hertz. This value might also vary depending on control tuning. The least accurate models are the ones that do not include the PLL dynamics, which are the simplified RMS models. These are only valid for frequencies very close to the nominal frequency, 50 Hertz. The reason for that is that they start to diverge in a very early stage for very low frequencies. As a conclusion, we see that there is a growing need to determine the accuracy of converter modeling assumptions for different types of simulations and how they can be used for stability studies. From the study that was shown, we noticed that phaser-based models without PLL presented a very narrow bandwidth, mostly limited to nominal frequency. It was possible to extend this bandwidth above nominal frequency up to a few tens of hertz when the PLL was included.